figure it out. Oh, man. My ankles are like frozen solid. I just want to wrap myself up in this blanket. <sighs> Even when it's freezing cold, oh, I can't sleep. <clears throat> Unless I sleep naked. <laughs> That's the only way for me to sleep. I'm just too comfy. I need to be free. <laughs> nice and free. I know you have a hard time falling asleep, so let's just relax and take it easy and breathe and eventually enough time we'll just fall asleep oh my mind is like fried right now it's hard for me to think serious you should sleep naked too <laughs> I'm not trying to be weird or have you do anything next to me I'm serious like I used to I mean I still have trouble falling asleep sometimes but I'm lucky enough to not really have to have a sleeping schedule and I just kind of sleep when I'm tired but sleep naked and it's gonna feel so comfy and just have the sheets and blanket wrapped around you and this perfect nice cool warm silky feeling <laughs> I don't know how to explain it go ahead lay down with me try it it might feel weird at first but I promise you're gonna love it next to you every single night <laughs> to have you against me to wrap my arms around you to breathe you in <laughs> um, that way we don't get too hot we can cuddle all night and comfy and breathe in and out <laughs> there's this thing that I used to do to help me fall asleep and it was hard for me to like clear my mind and I tried what everyone usually says like counting sheep or not thinking 
can get many of these. Not that that works, but... You know, but the only thing that's ever worked for me was lying flat on my back and envisioning my entire body like there was these lights inside of me. Lights covering my entire body. And one by one, I turned them off. There. <coughs> well, let's try something. <laughs> Lay back. And get nice and comfy for me. Mm. on your breathing. Shut out the entire world until one of you hears my voice. One of you hears me. One, two, three, four, five, six. my voice and I want you to listen to what I say imagine that there's all these little tiny lights inside of you <coughs> and I want you to focus on the light in your head and I want you to imagine that it's this light that you can magically dim and slow and slowly and now the light in your head is off and there's one in your nose and you focus on your nose and we're gonna go ahead and turn that light off there you go and then the one in your mouth envision it and turn that one off as well and now we're gonna follow that path down to your mouth and then your throat and we're going to go ahead and turn that light off nice and slow just like that good job and then now we're going to go to your right shoulder and you're going to see that light and you're going to turn it off and you're going to feel your body floating or tingling sensation. If you don't feel it yet, don't worry. <laughs> now we're going to turn off the light in your elbow. In your forearms. And then on your right hand, the lights and all your fingers are going to turn off slowly one by one. shoulder to your collarbone and turn those lights off and then your left shoulder envision that light and slowly turn that off and then the light in your elbow just keep keep imagining it keep focusing on your body and the lights and now your forearm and now on your left hand you're going to turn off the fingers one two three four and five good that's my girl now you're going to follow your arm all the way back up through your forearm to your shoulder back to your collarbone and there's one light in your chest and 
shining throughout your whole body. I want you to take that bright light and slowly dim it, nice and slow. This one takes a bit longer to turn off, but when you do, you're going to go down your chest to your tummy, to your cute little belly button, down into your butt, and turn that light off. And then we're going to go down the right leg. Slowly turning the lights off one by one. And went to your knee. And down to your little toes. And we turn those five little toes off. One, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to follow all the way back up your knee, to your hip, and then to your left leg, and down that, we're going to follow that to your knee, and turn that light off, nice and slow, and then down to your little toes, and we're going to turn those off, nice and slow, one, two, gonna make one up. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a cricket was the muddiest cricket in all the land. And you see this mud cricket was very special because all the other mud crickets were jealous of him because he had more mud than any other cricket. <laughs> and, and all the other mud crickets wanted to play with him. Mr. Mud Cricket was a little too proud. He thought, hmm, I have so much mud, why would I need to play with you? You over there who barely has any mud. And so, all the other Mud Cricket children went to go play. And then Mr. Mud Cricket would go on and walk around and gallivant all through the land showing his smug little face and how proud he was to have all the mud. But Mr. Mud Cricket grew, grew lonely. He wanted friends to play with, but he didn't know how to change. He felt as if everyone already knew him as one way. How can he pretend to be another? But one day, a little baby mud cricket came up to Mr. Mud Cricket and said, Mr. Mud Cricket, can I please get some of your mud? And and then I know what you're thinking. This sounds a lot like Rainbow Fish. <laughs> but but it's not. It's a, a completely different story. 
it's a story that's been in my family for just generations. Um, anyway, um, so Mr. Rainbow, Mr. Mud Cricket <laughs> was like, no, this is my mud. You don't get any mud. This is my mud. I worked very hard for this mud. <clears throat> and so the baby Mud Cricket was like, please, Mr. Mud Cricket, you have so much mud. Maybe, maybe I can get a little bit. What's well, just a handful of mud? You're covered in it. And Mr. Mud Cricket said, well, <laughs> maybe when you get to be my age and you worked for your mud, you little crickets these days, you little mud crickets, all you want is just everything to be handed to you. And so Mr. Mud Cricket scoffed and looked away and walked away. And the baby mud cricket cried and cried and cried. But he wasn't going to give up. <clears throat> and so he told all his friends that he went to ask Mr. Mud Cricket for more mud. And they all laughed because they all tried before. And they knew that the answer would be no. And so Mr. Mud Cricket would walk off and smugly show all the mud that he had on him. And everyone was envious of how much mud that he had. But Mr. Mud Cricket was starting to get very lonely. And so the next day, another little Mud Cricket came by and asked, Mr. Mud Cricket, may I please have some more mud? Or please have some mud? And so... Mr. Mud Cricket said, no, why do you deserve my mud? I worked hard for this mud. My grandpa and my grandpa's grandpa gave me this mud. They worked hard for this mud. They, they worked harder than anyone else. And that's when they found out that Mr. Mud Cricket inherited his mud. He didn't earn it. He inherited it. So that little baby mud cricket said, oh, okay, and went to go tell all the other mud crickets that Mr. Mud Cricket inherited his mud. He didn't work for it. He was just lucky enough to be born under crickets who had all the mud. And so angry, all the other little mud crickets gathered up and they said, hey, we outnumber Mr. Mud Cricket five million to one. What do you say we eat, Mr. Mud Cricket? <gasps> there were gasps in the audience. But alas, they said, wait. Mr. Mud Cricket may have all the mud, but there's tons of other mud crickets who also inherited their mud. I say we eat them all. And so all the little baby mud crickets ate all the big mud crickets, and everyone had mud. The end. <laughs> oh, <fuck. clears throat> and that's just the beginning of the story. Part two next time. Good night, sweet dreams, don't the bed books bite, and if you still can't sleep, I'm gonna count, and to who, I don't know, we'll see, one, two, three, Six mud crickets, seven mud crickets, eight mud crickets, nine mud crickets, ten mud crickets, eleven mud crickets, twelve mud crickets, thirteen mud crickets, fourteen mud crickets, fifteen. Sixteen.
27 mud crickets, 28 mud crickets, 29 mud crickets, 30, 30 mud crickets, 31 mud crickets, 32 mud crickets, 33 mud crickets, 34 mud crickets, 35 mud crickets, 37, no, I miscounted, I live in America, I don't have a very good education, 36 mud crickets, 37 mud crickets, 38 mud crickets, 39 mud crickets, The 41 cricket ran away because he could not stay in line and he wanted his fair share of mud. And so he ran and he ran and he ran as far as he could. They called him the runner, Mr. Runner, Mr. Mud Cricket Runner, for he was the fastest mud cricket alive. You see, his first name was Barry. Barry Mud Cricket Allen, and this Mud Cricket had little streaks of red on the side of his body. And one day, when he was working in his lab, a thunder strike happened, and he got electrocuted. And somehow, the speed force entered his body, and so this Mud Cricket felt that he had a sense of duty, a sense of duty to all his fellow fellow Mud Crickets to not just sit on the sidelines like he did his whole life to actually fight for what was right and he became the mud flash the malash the mal malash the the cricket flash the the flash cricket He was the speedster, the mud speedster, the mudster. And there was, he wasn't the only cricket who gained these supernatural powers from this landing storm. There was another cricket who, who fell into a water bath with, into, into, and there was an ice cube in it. And so he gained ice cold cricket powers. They called him cold cricket. And one day the cold cricket was like, I need, I need more mud. I'm going to go to central mud cricket city and steal all the money, the, all the mud, the mud money. And so he went there and he was, and he froze all the mud. And he said, this mud is my mud. And so, Barry Cricket ran as fast as he could at the speed of light and went bah, right to his face. And then he got knocked out. And then he became a hero. And everyone was like, wow, the Scarlet Mudster. And he was like, no, my name is the Mudster. Wait, Scarlet Mudster? That's a really good fucking name. I am now the Scarlet Mudster. And then... One day, after two years later, there was a crisis, and, and he was running to stop this black hole, and he saw another Scarlet Speedster run past him, but it was a purple Speedster. And then he was like, who is a Speedster? I must stop him, because he's probably a bad guy. And then so what happened was... He had to end up trusting her, you see. And and it turned out that that cricket's name was Nora. Nora Cricket Allen, his daughter from the future. And and he was like, What? What do you mean my daughter? What are you what are you talking about? How how is this possible? And she was like, Dad. 
it's simple, the speed force. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. This, this, the cricket speed force, I forgot about it. It's very powerful and very scientific. You're right, daughter. <laughs> and, and so he said, wait, but if you're my daughter, why do you look like my best friend? And he, she was like, oops, I came back to the wrong time. And then he was like, yes, she falls in love with me. Fuck yeah, let's fucking go, baby. Easy, easy dubs. And then, to be continued, the end.